kan dulu ya kita ya kata kiasan jadi ada majas metafora ada mat- majas simile atau simile ada personification personifikasi ada hyperbole ada simbolism oke okay? so you can see also in your book ada beberapa majas yang dibuat di situ Uh, and denotation konotasi tuh makna konotasi makna negatif and makna denotation makna yang sebenarnya let's see from connotation uh, from denotation juga uh, denotation ya yeah. first let's open up your book page 6.12 it says denotation is the dictionary meaning or the meanings of the word jadi kalau denotasi itu adalah uh, makna sebenarnya Ya, contohnya saya kasih um, blue. Blue, what is blue? See, you can see, you can uh, describe anything with blue. Tapi kalau misalnya arti sebenarnya itu apa? Yaitu one of the color, ya kan? Jadi uh, itu adalah denotasi. Tapi if I say I'm feeling blue. What does it say? What did that? What does it mean? I'm feeling blue. Yes, I'm feeling sad. Yes, I'm feeling. I'm feeling sad. Jadi blue itu adalah makna selain makna sebenarnya. Connotation is what it suggests beyond what it expresses. It's overtone of meaning. Imagine imagery is the representation through language of sense of experience. Imagery covers imagery of seeing, imagery of feeling, imagery of tasting, and smelling. Nah, figurative language ini tadi juga dibilang, is any way of saying something other than the ordinary way. For example, metaphor compares between things is essentially unlike. The eagle grab the body with its hand. The eagle, jadi ini yang kayak uh, menggambarkan dua hal yang seperti, Sepertinya tidak sama keduanya gitu Yang memang berbeda The eagle grab the body with its hand And then ada simile Simile ini compare between things Essentially unlike using words Such as like And uh, As like Then similar Jadi ini untuk compare dua hal Kita menggunakan use the word like Ada yang bisa oh, Contohnya she jumps like a squirrel It means it's very, she jumps very fast, right? Ada yang bisa bikin yang lain? Majas simile. Dia compare dua hal dan menggunakan seperti. Ada habis, ada yang bisa bikin? Ada yang bisa buat contohnya? Atau kita di dalam sentence we usually heard about You have to be brave like a lion. Yeah? You have to be brave as a lion. Or she works like a cow. For example, dia itu banting tulang. Artinya itu banting tulang. Atau, oh, be busy as bee. Pernah nggak kalian dengar gitu? Be busy as bee. Sibuklah seperti uh, lebah gitu. Jadi dia itu... Uh, kita mau menggambarkan misalnya manusia dengan hewan tetapi bukan hewannya yang di uh, digambarkan kita mau menggambarkan uh, characteristic characteristic oke okay? and then the next one we have personification gives the attributes of human being to an animal an object atau or an idea for example morning dew runs widely itu wild well, yeah widely atau kita juga bisa bilang seperti yang tadi uh, the sun is smiling at me atau oh the sun just said hi to me this morning atau the sky is full of dancing stars at night jadi kita memberikan karakteristik of human and then yang satu lagi ada majas hiperbola atau melebih-lebihkan sesuatu for example you can say oh uh, He snores louder than a, a train horn, for example. Siapa yang siapa orang mana yang ini mengorak lebih lebih gede dari apa dari train horn ya? Jadi tidak ada. For example, ketika kita berbicara juga sama orang apa menggambarkan experience kita. Oh aku ini 
uh, tadi pagi aku harus jalan 25 km melewati lautan, gunung, lembah, kaki ayam lagi kan seperti itu. Jadi kita melebih-lebihkan sesuatu. So that's the majas hyperbole. Okay, so next one we have this one. So who can read this poem? Coba Mbak, ini tadi aku nggak ada baca. Mbak Sri Andayani ada di sini ya? Tidak ada namanya di sini. Oke, okay, coba. Coba Mbak dibaca ini. Yes. Mm-hmm. Spur. Oke, okay. jadi thank you. Jadi kalau misalnya di dalam poem atau bahasa puisi itu kita menggunakan bahasa yang seperti ini kan. Sometimes it doesn't have to be in a right or in a correct grammar. Jadi kita jadi mereka itu para pu, pembuat puisi apa kita bilang poet. Ya para poet itu menggunakan their own way to express their self atau their meaning. So that's how we want to write a poem. Okay. So next one on to grammar focus pada um, ini unit two we have contraction. I believe that you guys already know the contraction, right? Contraction itu to shorten the words, two words, and into one new word. For example, you can see also your book. Yang ini m. Is, are, has, have, and had. For example, oh, I'm watching TV. What I'm supposed to say? For example, another one, she's dancing. It's going to rain. Her tapes. Ini jarang sih, her tapes in the bag. The book's red. The book is red. Usually people just say that uh, directly. Her tape is in the bag. The book's in the rack. Uh, usually we can find this contraction when we want to join pronoun with a helping verb. But then, I rarely seen with nouns. But then you we can see this one as a, a reference. Yeah, you are very kind. They are singing. What you doing? What? How do you say that? What you doing? Or where are they Sam? It's really hard when it comes to uh, question word. Nah, jadi kalau untuk question word yang paling sering itu digunakan yaitu how atau who's, who she atau how she. And then the next one we have had here and then have. I've heard about it. They've been away. And then where have been where they been? How your parents doing? And then I'd been sitting here, the class uh, been mobbed, what uh, she done, who'd been there. Tapi had di sini, untuk contractionnya kan itu menggunakan I dengan di juga. Sometimes people uh, misunderstand with I dengan would, karena dia itu mempunyai contraction yang sama. Contohnya, bisa dilihat to the next page, yang the last one. I'd go by myself, they'd let me, at the time tell, Jade uh, reply my the letter. But how can you dip, differentiate these two words? Bagaimana, kita, uh, bagaimana cara kita untuk membedakan hal tersebut? Ada yang tahu tidak? How can we differentiate? Dia sama-sama pakai D. 
untuk contractionnya. Tapi apakah dia itu would, apakah dia itu had? How do we need, how do we differentiate them? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, jadi itu benar ya, benar yang dibilang mbaknya. Jadi kalau misalnya dia menggunakan had, si after had we it always come verb three atau past participle ya. The class had been mobbed. The where had she done? Where had been? The, uh, who's been there? Tapi ketika kita menggunakan would, dia itu selalu diikuti oleh verb one atau bear verb. Atau kata dasar, I would go by myself. They would let me go. Time would tell. Jay would reply. Where would you like to stay? Jadi kita bisa melihat dari kata kerja yang digunakan. Okay, so let's move on to the question so we can see, uh, we can know this one better. For example, Tim has been staying in Manila for 20 years. Tim's been staying in Manila for 20 years. Coba kita start with... Mbak Siti Karina no. Mbak Indri no. Mbak oh, Oke, okay. Mbak Indri coba nomor 2 mm -hmm. Occupied. Mm -hmm. Bagaimana kita cara ininya? Shorten the word. Bisa dilihat yang harus kita shorten itu yang mana? R-nya ya. Jadi, when I come, all tables, apostrophe plus R-E, occupied. Tables are occupied. But this is really rare. I've never seen this one. We use uh, this kind of subject and then put R in contraction. So, I can say that we don't do that actually, yeah? Jadi, contraction itu biasanya untuk si subjek yang are we, you, they, she, he, it, dengan si helping verb. Other than what, it's really rare in the sentence. Okay? Jadi, uh, and then also, when you want to write, um, kalian ada karya ilmiah kan nantinya? When we want to write a uh, project atau karya ilmiah, kita tidak menggunakan contraction juga di dalam sentence because we need to write in an academic way okay but anyway so number three ron will take care of the package by himself coba mbak tika resti number three mm -hmm. apostrophe mm -hmm. Yes, jadi kita juga itu benar kita harus pakai apostrophe double L, tapi biasanya kita menggantinya menjadi pronoun ya di dalam sentence. For example, he'll take care of the package by himself. Jadi itu, tapi kalau kalau kita menggunakan he will atau he'll, yes, we see this one in the sentence in in the paragraph or in English book. Tapi kalau misalnya nama ditaruh LL, it's really real ya. Oke, okay, number four, coba Mbak Titin. Mbak Titin. Tadi Mbak Titin bisa. Mbak Wiwi. No. Mbak Jahro. Mbak Jahro. 
Pak Jaro. Loh, ke mana Mbak Jaronya tadi bisa ngomong? Oke, okay, Mbak dan let's see. Um, Mbak Sri Andayani silakan nomor Ah, oh, siapa ini? Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Mbak Sri Andayani nomor 4. Mm-hmm. Francis Scott Jadi kita pakai apostrat, uh, apostrof uh, D ya Francis Scott uh, Forgotten the Invitation Yes Oke okay, next one number 5 Mbak Sintawati mm-hmm. Number 5 Mm-hmm Yes. Mhm. Mhm. Yes, the planes pass the terrible storm, ya. Yeah? Atau kalau misalnya kita ubah the plane-nya menjadi pronoun, kata ganti, kita juga bisa bilang it's past the terrible storm. Oke, okay, number six, coba Mbak Rohayati. Number six, yes. Mhm. Mhm. Menjadi Men- menjadi apa diubahnya? VE ya. Jadi itu you've kept the secret for many years. Jadi you plus VE, you. Oke, okay, number 7 coba Mbak Marina nggak bisa tanya. Mbak Kurniawati bisa enggak tadi ya? Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, number 7, Mbak. There's some oil in on the floor and it's very dangerous. Yes, correct. Number 8 coba Mbak Feby. Yes, I'm very disappointed. So I'll never see. Uh, I'll never. Oh, I'll never see Susan anymore. All right. Num- number nine, Ba Enda. Mm-hmm. Number nine, Ba Enda. What the Oke, okay, Mbak nggak bilang S-nya. What's the matter with you? Ya, yeah, what's the matter with you? Everything is okay. Oke, okay, good job. Number the last one coba Mbak Diana. Mbak Diana. Apostrop double L. Mm-hmm. Okay, the graduates all take their certificates in the office. Okay, good job. So this one is easy, right? Gampang bukan? Gampang lah. Okay, so uh, we will continue to this sentence, uh, this uh, quiz, uh, no questions. But then after we finish the next part of our class. which is we have this one as well conditional sentence have you guys heard about conditional sentences apa itu conditional sentences kalimat pengandaian yes 
Jadi itu adalah kalimat pengandaian. So, how many types of conditional sentences that you know? Four? What are they? Okay. 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 Okay, usually people are gonna say like three, first, second, and third. But then, yes, some of you already know like we have zero uh, conditional sentence. We are going through that one one by one. So I'm just gonna give you like some explanation here. Conditional sentences are also known as conditional clauses or if clauses. They are used to express that the action in the main clause, yang without if, can only take place or can only happen if a certain condition is fulfilled. Kalau sesuatu persyaratan terjadi, maka itu akan terjadi, ya. Yeah? Jadi, for example, we have type 1, 2, and 3, and then if clause-nya itu bentuknya simple, pa uh, simple present, simple past, atau past perfect. And the main clause will future or model infinitive atau would infinitive would have past participle atau verb 3 so seperti tapi yang seperti yang tadi dibilang ada juga yang zero zero uh, zero conditional what is this zero conditional apa yang dimaksud sebagai zero conditional yes Yes, correct. Jadi dia ini membacakan suatu fakta dan dia itu tidak ada perubahan will atau would ya. Dia menggunakan present perfect all the time. So, ini tadi if sama dengan if equals to present form and then present form. For example, if you heat ice, it melts. Of course ya. Kalau kita panaskan es kan itu uh, esnya kan bakalan mencair ya. So, it's also facts and then it doesn't have uh, would atau will so it uses present form atau in this type of conditional sentence you could use when instead of if kita bisa menggunakan when untuk menggantikan if juga For, contohnya when you hit eyes it melts ya jadi bisa menggunakan when atau bisa menggunakan if it's always true that when you hit eyes it melts This is why this type of sentence is sometimes called a zero conditional. Ini paham ya, zero conditional ini apa? Okay, so the next one, let's continue. We have type 1. It means true in the present and future. Jadi formulanya itu adalah E plus present form. And then ditambahkan will atau can or may. Kita juga bisa menggunakan care or, no, or may. So situation, true in the present or future. Simple present, simple present will, and simple form. For example, if I win the lottery, I will buy a TV. This, is, this sentence express, uh, expresses a particular activity or situation in the future. Tapi kalau misalnya aku tidak menang, I'm not gonna buy. I won't buy a TV. So, something gonna happen if something else fulfilled. Okay, contoh yang lain. If these things happens, that thing will happen. Atau, if you don't hurry, you will miss the train. The next one, if it rains today, you will get wet. Ya, yeah? if it rains today, you will get wet. Ada pertanyaan sejauh ini? No? No? Okay, it's easy. So, if there is no question, let's see this one. Number one, if my aunt, uh, if my aunt comes to visit, she will give us a present. Coba dijawab Mbak Catur nomor dua. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't rain, we will go to the beach. Yes, number three. Coba Ibu Ani. Okay, number three Mbak Rita. Mm -hmm. Number three. Are you sure if it doesn't snow, then how can you make a snowman? Snowman. We already have will. 
Jadi yang pertamanya itu bakalan present form. If it snows. Jadi kalau malam ini bersalju atau saljunya datang, besok kita bakalan buat snowman, ya. Yeah? So if it snows tonight, we will make a snowman tomorrow. Oke, okay, number four, coba dari bawah lagi. Mbak Jaro masih masak? Mbak. Udah bisa? Oke, okay. oke okay, number four. If you don't try, you won't succeed. Ya, yeah. you won't, yes. Will not itu, ya. Yeah. Will not itu kita singkat menjadi want, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. If you don't try, you won't succeed. Oke, okay, next one number five. Coba Mbak Mbak Titin nggak bisa lagi. Mbak Tika Resti. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Yes, if you bring the sandwiches for the picnic, I will bring the drinks. But if you don't bring it, I won't bring it. Okay? Next one, number <laughs> number six. Mbak, Mbak Indri. Yang mana ini? Mbak siapa? Okay, Mbak Titin. Oh, bisa. Tadi saya panggil. <laughs> Coba. Okay, okay. Next one, number six. Yes, if he talks too long, his parents would not let him use the phone. Okay, number seven. All right, number seven, Ba Indri. Ba Indri. Okay, Ba. Okay, after Ba Indri, we have Ba Sri Andayani. Mbak Sri Andayani, no, Mbak, can you guys hear me? Oke, okay. kayak kok semuanya kayak mute gitu ya, jadi apa suara saya nggak kedengeran, apa gimana? Oke, okay, next one after Mbak, uh, Mbak Siti, no, Mbak Siti Suwati nggak bisa tadi ya, Mbak Siti Ntawati deh. Mbak Sintawati mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he Oh no no sorry sorry Number seven mbak Number seven sorry Sorry. He uh, Yes, he will turn on the heater if it gets too too cold. Yes. All right, number 8, coba Mbak Kurniawati. Mm -hmm. Unless you You won't understand the question Unless you You what Mbak jawabannya Apa tadi Mbak jawab Yes, you, you, you won't understand the question unless you read the book. Yes, jadi itu jawabannya to read, ya. Yeah? Okay, so that's uh, type 1 of conditional sentences. So we have now type 2. Type 2 ini means uh, untrue. Sorry. Type 2 ini untrue atau contrary to the fact. 
in the present or future. Jadi kita punya if, kita tambahin past form, and then kita tambahin would, could, atau might. Jadi bentuk kedua dari will, could, atau might ini ya. For example, if I won the lottery, 